Siblings in Christ, this day we gather in community to rest from our labors, to see those we miss, and to open ourselves to that greater reality of which we are a part. May, May we, we find, find inspiration, inspiration and, and renewal. renewal. May we, we touch, touch the holy in each other and be touched by the graciousness of life. May we find here an acceptance and peace that will carry us through the day. And so during this season of Easter and this time of worship, we light our Christ candles. Our regular lighter isn't here. I wonder if Xander wants to come forward and light the candle. Hey, Xander. Oh, Charlie too? Charlie as well. Let's have two. That would be great. We need lots of help up here. Thank you. Reverend Joe is going to help you light. And the candle in our sanctuary is wrapped symbolically from week to week in the diverse colors of the human flesh. The presence of the divine in the human is true in Jesus the Christ and true in all people. There we go. Thank you so much to you both. And so let us continue with this time of gathering with our land acknowledgement and statement of welcome. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jennifer Allen. Welcome to Parkminster. Would you join with me in a responsive reading of our spring land acknowledgement and statement of welcome? We begin our service with gratitude and respect as we remember together that this land this planet is sacred. We are on holy ground. Earth is our only home, and we are connected with all who live here. In every season, the earth offers us wisdom. From the thaw and muck of its arrival, spring begins giving, and this continues through the lengthening days in an, end of, in an endless swell of astonishments. 
Daubs of green appear in the dark earth. Buds turn to leaves and fresh color covers the land. Spring awakens in us a hope-filled confidence. Yet we know we have not honored our deep relationship with the earth. The climate crisis, the devastation of habitats, and loss of species are all calling us to learn and practice better stewardship. The Haudenosaunee, Shanaten, and Anishinaabe have cared for and shared this land for millennia. Generations ago, they welcomed newcomers who entered into treaties with them. Treaties and trust have been broken. We all live with the consequences. We seek to live into right relationship with all Indigenous peoples on whose land we've settled. We commit to listening to and respecting their wisdom. In this moment of silence, we ponder, what signs of right relationships do we see? Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth and children, couples and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude, and we pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Thanks so much, Jennifer. We move now into our time of announcements as a community of faith. And if you're with us here in the sanctuary and you have an announcement you would like to share this morning, I just invite you to come forward to the lectern and I'll invite you to do that in just a moment. And for those on Zoom, if you have something to share, if you could type that for me in the chat and I can read that aloud. And Liz, I think I saw you getting up, so I'll have you come forward as I share just a couple of quick things. Um, just a reminder to our families, our next family party is on Saturday, May the 6th, and children are invited to join me and members of the Christian Education Committee for dinner and activities while their grown-ups enjoy their own evening out. Uh, you can see what's up for details, and please contact me if you're interested in attending. And since we've got some announcements, I'm going to let you all go first, and I'll keep going after. So Liz. The bad news is I had it on a paper and I realized it's not with me once I got here. So here we go. <laughs> on Saturday, the 29th, Inclusive is having a LGBTQ plus al and allies um, potluck. You bring your own food. We'll, we'll provide um, tea and coffee. But um, this one is special because we're having a speaker named Kate Glasson. Uh, Kate will be speaking about, um, this word might be too strong and I had it written down properly, but uh, hatred towards transphobia in the Waterloo region. Now, I heard Kate speak when I was watching a, um, a Waterloo Board um, of Education meeting, and in a very short time, that person talked about um, what it meant to have white privilege, and suddenly, after spending lots of time trying to figure that out in about three sentences, she made it so clear to me, and I've never forgotten what she says. So I think that she is well worth coming to hear. Uh, so we meet at six, we start mingling, oh no, we mingle at six, and we start eating around 6.30, and we're hoping that some lots of people come. Just, I think it will be well worth listening to this person. She is very well-spoken and informative. So please join us. Good morning. I'm back on behalf of TCAL. 
Uh, we're very excited about the wheels turning. We're going back to Columbia 2024. Our information sessions are rolling through. We've had our two online ones. And I wanted to remind you to remind all the youth you know, everybody you know that's in high school. Uh, we have our information session here at Parkminster in the gym tomorrow night at 7. So anybody you know that might be interested in going um, through the experience as a participant or even as a leader, please get them to come out tomorrow night at 7 here. Or if they can't make it, our last info night will be um, May 1st. That's also Monday at 7 p.m at Harcourt Memorial United Church in Guelph, and it will be in the Friendship Room. If you have any questions, there's information in the WhatsApp, there's information on the Parkminster website, as well as the TCAL website, or you can feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Good morning. <laughs> on behalf of um, the... Uh, property committee and the uh, kitchen committee, I have a question and a request. Uh, first, a question. Who has done their laundry this week? No. Would uh, anyone who has tea towels or, or cloth from the kitchen will bring them back? That would be great. Thank you all for those announcements, and I just have one more. Uh, of course, today is Reverend Joe's last Sunday before his sabbatical begins officially tomorrow, and so we wish him well, and we look forward to welcoming him back in September. There will be something a little special later in the service, and just a note to parents that we will be coming back up for that, so we will be returning to the service a little bit later. Seeing no announcements on Zoom, then let us continue our time of gathering by singing our opening hymn, number 766 in the Voices United hymnal. However, note that the words on the screen or in your large print bulletin or your digital bulletin are what we'd like you to sing from because there's variations. So if you can follow on the screen, that would be wonderful. And as we sing together, children are invited to join me downstairs for our activities and as mentioned, we'll return a little later in the service. Please be seated.
Friends, scripture is our song for the journey. It's the human witness to the work of God and the joys and challenges of faith of another era. It is our faith tradition passed from generation to generation to guide and to inspire. And so as we seek that guidance and inspiration, let us open our minds and hearts to God's word amidst the words. Let's pray together. Holy One, bless our listening and our pondering that we might wrestle a holy revelation for our time and place. As we hear these words of faith, fill us with anticipation to be not just hearers, but doers of the word. Amen. This morning's reading from our faith tradition is taken from the Hebrew scriptures, the book of Exodus, chapter 17, verses 8 through 13, from the Inclusive Bible. The book of Exodus is the story of the Jewish people as they journey with God from slavery in Egypt to a land promised to them, beginning with Abraham. It is a journey in which they wrestle with God, they feel abandoned by God, they seek to discover what it means to be the people of God. By the time we come to today's passage, the 40 years of wandering in the desert are almost at an end. Moses and the people face many challenges along the way as a stateless refugee people, including hostility from others. In our faith story today, they confront the Amalekite people. The Amalekites came into the area and attacked the Israelites at Rephidim. Moses said to Joshua, Select some men to go out and fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill holding the staff of God. So Joshua did as Moses ordered and fought the Amalekites, while Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of the hill. So long as Moses kept his hands raised, Israel held the advantage. But whenever he lowered them, the Amalekites took the advantage. When Moses' hands grew weary, they set upon a stone for him to sit on. Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side, so that they remained upright until dusk. And Joshua prevailed against the Amalekites by the sword. This is the witness of Israel. Thanks be for this testimony of faith.
Lovely. Thank you so much. And if I might be so bold as to make it about me, <laughs> what a beautiful piece. Uh, thank you, Neil, for, um, for a, a leave sending uh, for, for sabbatical. It's true, leaders are the, the better of the leaders, don't walk alone and are intentional. Uh, about about uh, about doing that one of the things heather and i often marvel um, about park minster is the depth and the variety of talent among the people here and we especially reflect on the incredible chairs of council that we've had in our time at park minster kathy short uh, jennifer Alan, uh, Maidith, Radlin, and uh, Dev Sirsima, who is our current chair. Their dedication, passion for this community, care, and insights have made mine and Heather's job so much easier and have shepherded Parkminster so ably through transitions and important decisions. They are incredible leaders. But even incredible leaders uh, don't do it alone. They invite people in to share their gifts, and they realize uh, when they need help. And, um, and I especially think of Kathy and Jennifer's leadership from the onset of the pandemic and how demanding leadership has been in this time. Uh, extra meetings. Uh, preparation for meetings, uh, the emotional labor of holding the tension between the care and safety of the people of Parkminster, the grief of loss of community, and the urge to have church feel normal again. Now, thank goodness that others have stepped up. Like Aaron and her supporting Moses, many of you, have held the arms of our leaders high uh, during these past three years. Many of you researched public health guidelines, kept abreast of wastewater findings, 
researched and drafted policies, set up systems for staying connected with each other, made calls to stay connected, applied for grants for AV equipment, installed AV equipment, and lots more. You have been the Aaron and her to our leaders during this time. And I reflect on our faith story this morning and how Moses' weary arms are an apt metaphor for his experience as a leader. Can you imagine leading a group of people wandering, searching for home for 40 years? The stories of Exodus tell us of near revolts, constant grumbling, and hopelessness. Can you imagine the toll on Moses? The memory of slavery in Egypt is just that, a memory. But the promised land is not yet in sight. Moses is a leader in that most difficult of times, the, the in-between time. That time between letting go of what we know and arriving where we want or need to be. And we've all had those in-between times, caught between what can no longer be and what has yet to be. The time between leaving our parents' home and establishing ourselves in the world. The time between a troubling diagnosis and a treatment plan, the time between a, a separation or divorce and the carving out of a new life. In between times tend to be highly anxious times. And the church has been there for a very long time. Caught between the age when the church was at the center of Canadian life and a yet-to-be-realized settling of the place of the church in Canadian society. It's a tough place to be for church leaders, and it takes its toll. As churches navigate these, these times seeking their purpose and place in a rapidly secularizing society, in addition to so many other societal changes, leaders are pulled in many directions and must deal with their own anxieties in addition to sometimes being a lightning rod for the anxieties of other people. And in my sabbatical plan, I shared some of my own struggle with this. I shared how as a church leader, I often experience a dissonance between the secular value of success and its poor cousin survival and the gospel, the good news of Jesus the Christ. It's daunting and difficult to keep love, which is self-sacrificial, uncomfortable, and unpredictable, to keep love at the center when the secular value of success which is often ego-centered, comfortable, and predictable, has been adopted and become ingrained in church culture. And as a leader, the situation is troubling because I so want the people that I minister with to experience release from the anxiety of success and to instead experience the freedom of grace, to see ourselves as a people of God, recipients of gifts. And I constantly wonder what church life would be like if the only question we ever asked was simply, what does love look like in this particular situation or circumstance that we're dealing with now? And if this were the only question we asked, what if the only skill we worked on developing and honing was discernment? 
where is God leading and calling in this situation? The sabbatical is an opportunity for me to reconnect with this core or this essence of ministry in this in-between time. And I think of that poem by Chang Zhu, the poem of the woodcarver, in which a carver who crafted a work of art, a stand for a bell, responds to a prince who is amazed by its beauty and wants to know the carver's secret. And in the poem, the carver replies, I'm only a worker. I have no secret. There's only this. When I began to think about the work you commanded, I guarded my spirit, did not expend it on trifles that were not to the point. I fasted in order to set my heart at rest. After three days of fasting, I had forgotten gain and success. After five days, I had forgotten praise or criticism. After seven days, I had forgotten my body with all its limbs. By this time, all thought of your highness and of the court had faded away. All that might distract me from the work had vanished. I was collected in the single thought of the bell stand. Chang Zhu is describing this total immersion in the task, a letting go of ego and a humble focus on what matters most. And that's what sabbatical allows for, reconnecting with the heart of the task that is ministry, the realignment of the soul with the role of ministry. So thank you for giving me the space and the time to reconnect with the heart of my calling and our calling together. Thank you to those of you who share in leadership at Parkminster. Thank you for the ways in which you hold up the arms of Parkminster's leaders. Thank you for holding up my arms with this sabbatical and putting the supports in place to hold up Heather's arms as she continues to minister during this time. We are not alone, the anthem says, and our creed says. So thank you for putting flesh on these words. We'll see you in September. <laughs>
Please be seated. Friends, the life of faith rests on gratitude, seeing ourselves as people in need for whom much has been given, seeing ourselves as recipients of grace, and in return for this holy generosity, we are moved to give back from all that we've been given. So thank you for your faith. Thank you for your generosity. Let us bring our gifts before God. Let us pray. Holy One, bless all that we offer, our time, our talent, our treasure, that through these gifts we might witness to the power of vulnerable love in acts of caring and compassion, in the struggle for social justice, and in deep, joyful worship. Amen. Please be seated. And so friends, let's stay in this time of prayer to reflect on and share the yearnings and struggles and joys of our lives. And we're wondering if you have any concerns or blessings you'd like to share this week. For those of you here with us in the sanctuary, we invite you to raise your hand and we'll come to you with the handheld mic. And for those on Zoom, you're welcome to type something in the chat for us to share out loud. Another sure sign of spring, the woodland flowers have started to bloom. Uh, Glenn Harper and I were at Huron Natural Area on Friday. We saw dogtooth violet, bloodroot, hepatica, and the trilliums are just ready to burst out. So if you find some time in the next couple of weeks, get out and see what you can find. Wonderful. Thank you, Jim. Always great for those reminders. That's right. Anyone else? 
one. Okay. I just wanted to share prayers for a very dear lifelong. Hello? Hello? Here we go. I just wanted to share prayers for the passing of a, a very dear and lifelong friend who passed away unexpectedly two days ago. And I got the notice of that. And then yesterday I got the notice of uh, uh, a person in the theater world that passed away quite a, suddenly at the age of 14. Hi, yeah, I'd like to ask for your prayers again for Patrick. Uh, Elijah, he's uh, really struggling and it's really hard to watch. So, um, yeah, I'd like to ask for your prayers for that. So we also want to continue our prayers for Laura Ford, who is in the hospital, but we rejoice that she is now off the ventilator and her family celebrates her remarkable spirit and resilience. And so we continue to hold Laura and all who love and care for her in our prayers at this time. Charlie has something to share. He's feeling sick, but we hope he's feeling better soon. So that's your grandpa, right, Charlie? Yeah, thank you. He's definitely holding grandpa in your pr our prayers. Thank you, Charlie. I'd like to pass on all our thank yous from Kathy and I for all the warm wishes we had uh, on the passing, passing of our mother just recently. Thank you. Thank you both. No, we keep you in our prayers. Thank you. Well, let us take these joys and concerns into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, may these prayers of blessing and concern, spoken from our hearts and held in our hearts, weave themselves into our living, that we may surrender all that sits on our souls completely to grace. As we go into the week, let us look to our lives and our world for the nudges, invitations, and workings of the Spirit, and the many unexpected ways prayer is answered. When we sense that Spirit, may we respond with humility, courage, and gratitude. Amen. So at this time, we'd like to invite Rob McQueen to come forward. And I'd also like to invite any of our young people who would like to join us at the front as well to do so at this time. You're one welcome to come and stand between Reverend Joe and I. So any of our young people who'd like to join us. Great to see everybody. Thank you for coming to help us. Memories of too much water. <laughs> that's right, yes, that's true. <laughs> Hi, Leo, do you want to come up? You want to come, come stand with us, Leo? Thank you. Well, on the seventh day, God rested and celebrated all of creation. God surveyed all that God had made and said, it is good. Joe, we work together in ministry here at Parkminster and have much to celebrate. We celebrate your encouragement, direction, and leadership in our work together as God's people in this place. Hold, this hold on. Do we advance the slide, uh, Terry? Ah, there you go. Go ahead, Rob. <laughs> of this ministry together, we say with confidence, it, it is, is good. good. I, thank I thank God for the ministry we share and the gift of this time away. And so today, in our Sunday activities, we heard how Jesus took time away to feed his spirit, and we know how important the rest and play of summer holidays and March breaks are for us. And so on behalf of the children and youth of Parkminster, we send you to play and rest, 
and we made something for you. Can you all help give Reverend Joe what we made together? Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> May the blessings of the divine guide and accompany you as you embark on your sabbatical. May this time of rest and renewal be a season of deep reflection, introspection, and growth for your mind, body, and spirit. May you be granted wisdom and insight as you study and engage with new ideas. I will hold you in my heart during our time apart. I will pray for you whenever you come to mind. I look forward to continuing to share in our ministry together, rested and re-energized. We send you now on this sabbatical journey, confidence that God will bless your every step, refresh your spirit, renew your mind, strengthen your body, and return you to us empowered with a renewed sense of purpose for our continued ministry together. Thank you all for all your help and for helping us bless Reverend Joe. Thank you so much. And so as we move into our closing hymn, I invite you to turn to the Red Voices United hymnal as we sing together number 626. So Leo's going to come forward to help us extinguish the candle. We thank Charlie and Xander for their help earlier, and now Leo's going to help. So friends, our service of worship is coming to an end. There we go. Good job. <laughs> the God we worship is never confined to this holy place. The light of Christ goes with us leading us towards paths of resurrection. So go and travel with the God who is found in ordinary and surprising places. May we follow and be bringers of hope to ourselves, our families, our communities, our world. And may the God of peace and joy who is continually making all things new bless you and keep you this day and always. Amen.